You never guess what? I've got another exam question walkthrough for A-level chemistry. So this is NMR number 31. If you want to check out the other videos in the playlist, I'll put the link to that at the top of the screen now. One word of warning about this question. One of the peaks in the proton NMR is not where you'd expect. Hope you liked the video, hope you find it helpful, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd love you to do so, but as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try it first. Typical structure determination question here, where we've got some elemental analysis by mass, we've got the mass spectrum, we've got the infrared spectrum, and we've got the proton NMR spectrum, and obviously we've got to put all of that together to come up with a structure for compound J. I think there's a bit of a catch in the proton NMR, but obviously I'll mention that when I get onto it. So we'll start with the elemental analysis. That's obviously going to give us the empirical formula. So it's just percentage over relative atomic mass. That gets us the moles. Divide by the smallest gets us the ratio. So the empirical formula is C9H10O. And then first thing you should do is work out the MR of that, 134. And then we'll move on to the mass spectrum. So we've got the molecular ion peak here at 134. So that's telling us the MR of J. We've also got a significant fragment peak here at 105. So we are going to have to talk about that. But we'll leave that until we've got the structure sorted. So all we can say at this point is that the molecular formula must be the same as the empirical formula C9H10O because of that MR. Moving on to the infrared spectrum, so we've got the usual activity at 3000 for the CHs, so nothing new there. We've definitely got a C double bond O, and we've also got quite a lot of activity here, which are due to aromatic CC double bonds. So at this point, we can say J is an aromatic aldehyde or ketone. So moving on to the proton NMR now, we'll start with this signal here. And I'm just going to do my usual thing, say the same sorts of things about each signal and build up a picture of the structure from that. So we've got a doublet there, which means there's an adjacent CH to the proton causing the signal. The area of one tells us that it's just one proton in the environment. So we've got a CH that's caused the signal. And the shift of just about 9 ppm is indicative of an aldehyde proton. So remember from the infrared, we said it could be an aldehyde or a ketone. We now know that it's definitely an aldehyde. So if you can, draw up that little part of the molecule. So we've got the H C double bond O, but there's an adjacent CH to it. So obviously that feature is in the molecule. Moving on to this signal here, so I've written up the possible options from the data sheet. Could be an OH, could be an NH, or it could be an aromatic hydrogen. So which one is it? Well, the area of five means that it has to be aromatic protons, because obviously you can't get an OH5 group, you can't get an NH5 group. So just something like that's totally fine. So we've got five aromatic protons due to this signal here. So therefore, we've got this structural feature in the molecule which again ties in with the infrared where we said we had some aromatic carbon-carbon um, double bonds. So moving on to this signal here that I've highlighted in green, this is where I think the question gets a little bit tricky. I'm just going to switch to the data sheet to explain what I mean. So according to the data sheet, um, a signal at around about 3.7, 3.8 ppm is indicative of OH, NH, HC single bond O, HCCl, HCBr. Now obviously it can't be the halogen ones, we don't have halogen in it. It can't be OH or NH because it's a multiplet um, and they're always singlets. So our option is HC single bond O. But we've already established that this thing is an aldehyde. So if you look at this part of the data sheet here, where it says chemical shifts are variable and can vary depending on the solvent. So basically, I think that's what they're playing at with this part of the question. So they've given us a signal here, but it's really due to the, the proton that's adjacent to that aldehyde group. So we just go through the motions for that signal. So we're calling it a pentet or a quintet because it's got five lines. Uh, that means there's four adjacent hydrogens. 
area one so it's a ch that's caused the signal and the shift we've just established from the data sheet is h to c to c double bundle so basically what we're talking about is this proton here which is in the h to c to c double bundle environment right so the adjacent protons well there's one of them so that means that there must be another three so there's a ch3 group also there so hopefully you can see we've actually got the molecule now because that benzene ring there is just going to be on this carbon here but obviously we need to talk about that final signal so we've got a doublet so there's an adjacent ch area three so ch3 has caused the signal and the shift of sort of one and a half ppm is h to c to r so we're talking about these protons here so now we're in a position to give the structure for J. So there it is there. And remember at the start of the question, I said I'd go back to that fragment peak at M over Z 105. So what could have caused that peak at 105? Well, if we think about the difference between the molecular ion peak and 105, it's 29. So we're looking for something in the molecule that could break off, it has an MR of 29. It's this aldehyde group here which means that the structure of the fragment ion must be this here. So very well done if you got this totally right. It's a tri I think it is a tricky question, especially with that shift issue uh, with one of those peaks in the NMR.